four servings of dairy per day. Two servings of eggs. Two servings of protein. Four servings of whole grains. Three servings of oils, fats, and butters. And lots and lots of salt. <laughs> So like any pregnant couple, we were just so excited to be pregnant and have our first kid. Yeah, and we were going to our midwife appointments and they suggested going and checking out this child birthing course. Yes, and so we signed up and week one was all about nutrition. And you guys, we were so shocked to find out what they were telling pregnant women to eat. Like we literally like, we're biting our tongues. We were floored. We were floored. <laughs> and so today that's what we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about what they suggested in that class. And those suggestions were made by the USDA and the California Department of Health. So they do recommend two servings of greens, one to two servings of citrus, and what is it, four to five? Five servings. Five, five servings of yellow and orange fruits and veggies. And that's like our lunch right there, <laughs> right? And it's like, whoa, like we eat a lot more than that, but yeah. at least they're recommending And they're leaving all the, all the good stuff. Like yeah. what, you can't have celery? Well, you can't have watermelon? So let's start with dairy. So this is what they were telling the women in our class, that dairy has protein, calcium, it uh, builds strong bones, it uh, helps create healthy blood, it eases insomnia and it helps regulate your heartbeat. And they were suggesting that you have at least four servings of this a day. They were also suggesting eggs because of the protein that's provided, the vitamins and the minerals, including vitamin A, which they said was an anti-infection fighting vitamin. And combining that with milk, it's going to provide you all these calories. And they said to do at least two servings a day. So with dairy, calcium, calcium doesn't build strong bones, silica does. Mm -hmm. Dairy is the number two food that feeds viruses and bacteria. Eggs is the number one food that feeds viruses, bacteria, yeast mold, uh, candida, and then you have to think of, okay, you know, you have a virus in your body, what is the dairy and the eggs doing to that, right? There's digestive enzymes, there's proteins, and there's hormones, growth hormones. So rather those things going to towards that baby that you have inside of you, it's actually going towards the viruses and the bacteria, the pathogens that live inside of you. So a lot of the animals that produce the eggs and the dairy are given hormones, antibiotics, they're fed GMO corn, soy, and wheat. Um, the viruses that are in our body, most of them live in our liver. And then the eggs and the dairy feed those things in the liver, which then causes our liver to become overburdened and sluggish. And remember, if mama has an overburdened liver, then all of that, those toxins, fall on the baby's liver, right? It so acts as like a second filter. So all that, that uh, those heavy metals, those pesticides, the viruses, the toxic DDT, pesticides, fungicides, all that bacteria, the yeast, the mold, the fungus, the candida, all that stuff then falls on the baby. Yeah, and this is why a large amount of babies will have allergic reactions is because they have these clogged livers. If you're, you know, you maybe had trouble getting pregnant in the first place, well, Look at your diet because dairy and eggs cause reproductive health issues. So detoxing is really important for our bodies to release the things that make us sick. What prevents detoxing? Protein, which protein equals fat. Dairy and eggs are loaded with protein and fat. I start every day with a, a protein bomb. And what protein does is it prevents the liver from detoxing, it clogs the bloodstream, and it stores toxins. Yep, which leads to unhealthy blood, yes. which they are claiming that this, this stuff actually makes your blood healthier, right? 
Because it does the opposite. It does the opposite. Yeah. It clogs your liver, which now your liver's overburned so you can't sleep at night, which they say dairy, you know, eases, eases all of that, right? And the third thing is your heart. It affects your heart because if your liver's clogged, then it can't send the stuff up to the heart. It's the opposite of what <laughs> what we just went through. Yeah. And since we're talking about protein, let's get into the suggested protein serving yes, size. Yes, this is a very controversial one. Yeah. Well, they say that protein is something good for the entire body, right? It's good for your teeth. It's good for your brain. It's good for your muscles. It's good for your bones. It's good for everything, right? And if you don't get enough protein, then it causes fatigue and swelling and lack of appetite. So it's important that you eat a lot of protein when you're pregnant, right? That's the claim. And they suggest having two servings of protein per day. And they also suggested in our class that you eat liver, which we don't think you should eat liver because that's the filter of your body, right? That's where all the toxins that's are where going. That's all the toxins are going, so you don't want to eat liver. Protein does not build muscle, and I know a lot of you are gonna disagree with that. What builds muscle is clean carbohydrates and glucose. In your brain, it runs off of glucose and mineral salts, mm -hmm. right? Not protein and fat. Exactly. If you have too much protein and fat, it actually shrinks your brain. Well, I actually fathered our youngest daughter when I was this muscular. So what's going to help the development of your baby? It's going to be good, clean carbs like bananas and squashes. It's going to be glucose from all those fruits. And it's going to be mineral salts from the celery juice and all of those leafy greens. And since we're talking about carbohydrates, let's talk about whole grain carbohydrates, which is what they discussed with us next. So the suggestion is that when you are burning all of those calories from the fats in the proteins, then the carbohydrates act as the fuel to keep you going, right? Because if you burn the fat and the protein, then that fat and that protein is not going to the baby to help develop and grow that baby. So the carbohydrates come in to kind of act as a building block. Right. for that baby. And they suggested four servings of whole grains. A day. A day. So gluten, gluten is a protein and it's found in a lot of whole grains. Now you guys already heard what we talked about with proteins, right? Gluten is also the number three thing that could feed any virus or bacteria. So you wanna stay away from that. <laughs> And it's going to cause discomfort and in inflammation in a lot of people. And the next one is fats and oils. So the claim is that you need the fats and the oils because the fats and the oils absorb the vitamins and minerals that you're getting from the proteins, the fat, and then delivers them to where they need to go in, in your body. And we're talking about butters and oils. And how the oils work in your body is when you put the oils in your body, they get absorbed directly into the bloodstream because they don't have to be processed, yep. right? Which then thickens your blood at a quicker rate, which then prevents the body from detoxing at a quicker rate. And then you've got canola oil. And canola oil is mainly GMO. And then you've got canola oil that feeds viruses, bacteria, yeast, and mold. Yep which then creates more problems for the body. And then when your body is overburdened, when your liver is overburdened, it then puts all the burden on the heart, which then the heart creates the adrenaline, which then the adrenaline creates the fatigue. Yeah, and this is all gonna lower your oxygen levels. It's gonna trap toxins in your body and it's gonna make it a lot harder for the organs in your body to release any toxins and poisons. And then there's salt. And they said, you know, put salt on everything. And if you cut back on salt, then it's going to lower the amount of blood that's circulating through the body, thus preventing those nutrients from getting to the baby. Yeah. And they said that if you don't have enough salt in your diet, you're going to get leg cramps and a lot of fatigue. 
and we know with salt, salt chronically dehydrates you, which then takes water from the body, which then takes the ability for your killer cells to move around and destroy these pathogens. Yes, and the salt also pickles and preserves the toxins in your body, which we don't want. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of our other videos and we'll see you next time. See ya.